ISA 320, which is materiality in planning and performing an audit, scope, objective, requirements, all highlighted. I haven't really highlighted anything else in particular, so I would now jump straight to my requirements. So my first requirement, paragraph 10, when establishing the overall audit strategy, the auditor shall determine materiality. Nice and simple. A3 to A12 give us some information about that, so let's see what they say. So A3 and A4 says the use of benchmarks. So it says, we need to apply percentage to a chosen benchmark. Here are some factors that we consider in choosing our benchmark. So first of all, they explain what are the elements in the financial statements. Well, we've got assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expenses. Okay, that's literally if you take your statement of comprehensive income and your statement of financial position. Those are your full-on categories. So now we know what they are in the financials. We still haven't chosen our benchmarks. It says some people or users are very focused on profits or revenues, so that's another consideration. The nature of the entity and its ownership structures, so if it's equity or finance through liabilities, that's going to impact. And then a huge one is the volatility of a benchmark. So guys, if revenue has changed significantly in the current year to the prior year because they've increased or introduced a new product, the prior year is not going to be relevant as a benchmark because of the significant change. So if a benchmark is quite stable, then that's a good example of a benchmark to use. So then A5 explains the examples of benchmarks. And we've got profit before tax, revenue, gross profits, total expenses, equity, or assets. And then they explain. You would use profit if it is a profit-orientated entity. But if profit is volatile, then gross profit or revenue would be acceptable because they all affect profit. So income generating, revenue, gross profit or net profit. Then it says, in determining which benchmark, we first need to use which financial data. So, are we going to use one, prior period, two, period to date, three, forecast or budget, and obviously four, if they have got current period full, those would be the most appropriate. Then it says, back to our benchmarks, if we were wanting to use percentage of profits, but there were exceptional increase or decrease in it because of circumstances, then maybe I want to use a normalized profit based on past results, but only if those are going to be a representative of the current year. So once again, it's talking about that volatility. We want to go with 12 months unless we are reporting on a less than 12 month period. And then they give us some examples of percentages. So they say maybe profit before tax is 5%, maybe 1% of total revenue. So you've got two percentages in the standard. Um, the rest are not given. And that's why I say you have to actually go and study them. Okay, back to the requirements. Once planning materiality is done, we then need to determine performance materiality. And this is what we're going to use to help with us identifying risks of material misstatements. And A13 has been highlighted there. And this is the justification for performance, guys, because planning an audit solely to detect individual material misstatements, so if we were only using planning to look for individual misstatements, overlooks the fact that aggregates of individual immaterial, so less than that planning, may actually cause the financials to be materially misstated. So performance materiality reduces this because it gives us a figure that is smaller to use in identifying risks of misstatements. And guys, because it's a smaller figure, it means we're going to pick up more risks. 
and if those risks materialize we're going to pick up more material misstatements because we've got a smaller figure and we can then use those to aggregate and compare to planning materiality. And then guys finally just being aware that materiality isn't set and steadfast. If you believe during the audit that maybe your materiality figure is wrong, you can revise it based on any evidence you gather throughout. So if you initially assess that maybe the risks were low, so your materiality figure was high, and now as you're working through, you're actually finding misstatements, so you're saying, whoa, my risk assessment was wrong, there's huge risks here, then I might want to lower my materiality. And if I lower planning, I need to consider the fact that I might have to lower performance materiality too. So that is ISA 320.